Stephen Delorme. I'm a designer um, here to talk about the uh, Bitcoin design community and kind of how we're trying to support open design and Bitcoin um, and how you can get involved in that. So feel free, come on in. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, the, the basic uh, gist of, of like the, the ultimate goal of the design community is really to deliver better experiences uh, to people on top of Bitcoin. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of people are already using Bitcoin. They're already, uh, you know, showing their friends how to back up seed phrases and, uh, you, you know, uh, setting up lightning nodes and all that. So people are already using Bitcoin. But these experiences can be a lot better. And, uh, and yeah. So, I mean, I think we're all here in this room. We're all here at this conference because in some way we think that uh, we can use Bitcoin to provide a lot of benefit to humanity. Um, you know, yeah, we wouldn't be here otherwise. We wouldn't be so committed to this. But the thing is, is like, you have these things like savings, remittances, sound money, freedom, whatever it means to you, you know, wherever you come from, whatever your background is, the, the, the exact benefits you get out of Bitcoin might differ a little bit. But the point is, is that uh, if you have a bad user experience, you end up blocking your user from getting to all these benefits. Um, and you know that that's a shame because you know there's people who work really hard on Bitcoin Core. There's people who work really hard on various Lightning implementations. People who work on hardware and software tools, and all of that, um, you know, all the benefits that that those tools can provide may not be seen. They may be blocked. So, you know, I mean, just to provide some kind of real examples of like UX problems in Bitcoin, um, you know. Uh, I've once had an experience with a Lightning wallet where I paid, uh, I paid uh, somebody and they received it the next day. That's not really how Lightning's supposed to work. They're not supposed to get the notification that they received the payment next day. So that's an experience I had. Another experience I had was just, well, I've had this experience many times in many different ways of just struggling to find the right QR code to scan. You know, it's like you think it's just as easy as scan it and pay and it doesn't always work. Uh, I've ran it, run into that so many times. Uh, you know, another, another example would be um, you're new to Bitcoin. Somebody convinces you to start saving in Bitcoin or accept it as payment for services, and then the price of Bitcoin drops 75%. That's also a true story. Um, and, and then, you know, you just c compound this with the fact that, like, Bitcoin is a global money, um, but we're not one global culture or one global people. Like different people use dif you know, different units and symbols. Um, different uh, cultures have different relationships with money, uh, interact with technology in different ways. So uh, this is, this is uh, very challenging in terms of trying to deliver a better experience on top of Bitcoin. But design fixes this. Um, that means we need more designers in the space, more designers getting involved in Bitcoin, and not just like with Bitcoin companies, but with Bitcoin uh, open source projects. And I'm just gonna say FOSS for the rest of the presentation, F-O-S-S, free open source software. So defining that now for, for anyone who never heard the term before. So that's kind of like what the ultimate goal of the Bitcoin design community is, or I said, you know, for serving that, get, getting better user experiences out there, we need more designers in the space. We need more designers working on FOSS Bitcoin. And, you know, like as a designer in open source, it can actually sometimes be a, a kind of lonely experience because designers and developers tend to have different processes. And, uh, you know, a lot of times it's not clear as a designer uh, how you get involved in an open source project. Or sometimes uh, for the developers on a project, it's not always clear how they're supposed to use you or benefit from you. Um, so that's, that's one thing we try to do in, in the design community is we try to um, create an environment where we help designers get involved in Bitcoin FOSS. Um, you know, so we have people who are, uh, you know, maybe, maybe they're UI designers, maybe they're just, you know, like marketing designers, uh, copywriters, translators, uh, people who are into uh, accessibility, uh, UX research, all, all these different things. We try, to, we try to bring all these people together and, uh, you know, they, they can share their experiences, share their knowledge, share their ideas with each other, and find ways to get involved in Bitcoin FOSS. Um, and we, we've, this kind of initiative started uh, off in uh, around mid-2020, um, seen a lot of organic growth since then. Uh, I'm, I'm an example of that. I wasn't there when the community kind of kicked off, but um, now I, I work in it full time thanks to a grant from Spiral. Um, but yeah, so just similar to kind of how Bitcoin, the white paper got released and then it just kind of took on a life of its own. Uh, the design community has also kind of seen that. And, uh, you know, just 
uh, just let's, let's, let's make this a little more concrete. We've been talking about like community and people and all this kind of stuff, but what are we actually building? So, uh, you know, the best the best place to kind of learn about what we're doing is just the website, bitcoin.design. That's the homepage you'd see right there. Um, pretty much all the information about the community is linked to in, in some way on, on there. Uh, you see this big button there, join us on Slack. You'd click that and then that would take you into our Slack channel. You got a variety of different channels here, design review, opportunities, you know, Bitcoin Core, GUI, all kinds of different projects. And, uh, you know, as you get involved in the community, your, your menu might look a little different depending on what you get involved with and who you start communicating with. Um, and then we have other channels where we get information out there. We got a Twitter, of course. We got a, a Substack. We got a YouTube and Bitcoin TV page. But, like, so, you know, sometimes this asynchronous communication, uh, you know, it's really good for people in different time zones, but sometimes you need higher bandwidth uh, communication. You need to be able to iterate on ideas quicker. And so we also do a lot of calls and stuff. Some of these are just like general community calls for people in the design community to talk about things they're interested in, but some of them are very focused project calls, um, like, uh, you know, the, the design review calls, uh, the design guide jams. There's now like a, a weekly call for people redesigning the Bitcoin core uh, graphical user interface. Um, so yeah, the, the, the calls also uh, provide a lot of value and these uh, you, most of the time get recorded and uploaded to our YouTube channel. But like what are, what are we actually working on uh, in this stuff? That ultimately all this conversation, the Slack channel, the, the, the calls, all of that, what we're trying to do is trying to get people to do open design. That probably sounds like a very similar, similar uh, term to open source. Um, but open design goes a little bit further. This is not just like, hey, I'm going to share my Figma files or my design files with you. Uh, it also means I'm, I'm going to actually build in public. Um, and uh, a lot of the projects I'm about to talk to you about now and share with you are examples of open design uh, happening right there on the internet. And if you want to uh, lurk or participate, it's available for you to do that. Um, so kind of the, the flagship uh, project of the community would be the Bitcoin design guide. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think it sounds like we got some fans. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, this is the homepage right here, bitcoin.design slash guide. And, you know, this is kind of like human experience principles uh, for Bitcoin projects. So, like, if I go to this one right here, this is getting started. And we got a lot of, like, kind of tech primer stuff for designers who may not be up to speed with uh, all of the Bitcoin tech stack. Or also kind of like some of the principles. Because, like, a good, uh, a, lot of the, a lot of stuff we work on is not just, like, not really exchanges and custodial stuff, but like stuff that is self-custodial, preserves the user's privacy, is inclusive, is you know censorship resistant, stuff like that. So the getting started really kind of brings the designer up to speed on the basic tech and the principles of, of Bitcoin products. And then uh, there's uh, reference designs that we do as well. So reference design is kind of like a pre-built product that you can, it's open source and you can just take it and run with it. Um, so we got several of them, the upgradable wallet, the savings wallet, et cetera, but by far the most mature one thus far is the daily spending wallet. And that's this page right here, and it's basically um, like the, this wallet that's uh, it's meant to be used on a smartphone, and it, it's, uh, it's self-custodial, and it's, uh, you know, lightning by default, and it's really um, meant for the user to kind of go about with their, like, daily financial activity, whether that's paying a friend over the internet or just you know, in a hypothetical world where they can just go to the convenience store and, you know, buy some groceries real quick using Bitcoin. So that's what the daily spending wallet is. There's like a whole bunch of Figma files and screens that you can just steal and run with if you want to use that as a starting point for one of your projects. Um, then also there's how it works section where we go into deeper dives into more specific, you know, technologies or like specific design problems. Like I wrote a whole page just explaining liquidity, lightning liquidity to designers. Uh, Christoph wrote this page about sign-in with Bitcoin and just the, the basic gist of uh, what a sign-in flow uh, might look like with a lightning wallet and what kind of problems that might solve for the user. Uh, then there's an accessibility section. You know, if, if Bitcoin is the best money, we want it to have the best user experience. And we can't just say like in a hyper-Bitcoinized world, like, oh, I'm sorry, you can't use money because you're blind. So. Uh, a Bitcoin wallet, you know, also needs to be accessible. It needs to be, um, you know, it, we, we don't want uh, uh, the wallet saying, hey, you need to back up your seed phrase. And we don't want the screen reader reading out the seed phrase, you know, for someone who's blind. That's an obvious security risk. So uh, accessibility is something to take into account as well. Um, then in addition to that, and beyond just the guide, we're trying to build out design infrastructure for Bitcoin. So there's a UI kit and an icons kit. Um, 
And uh, this, you know, the idea is that like you could take these Figma files and you know, you already have the basis for a nice clean looking user interface and you can just steal this material and use it on your projects. It's not to say that your, your Bitcoin wallet has to look like this. It's not to say that your, your project is bad if it doesn't match our template. It's just meant as a starting point um, so that like if you're an open source project with one or two contributors, this might be beneficial for, for you to have a good starting point. Um, and then the icons kit is also, um, uh, we have uh, NPM uh, modules for this. So we got React and Vue at the moment. Um, so that is uh, another good starting point you can use for your projects. Uh, I'm actually doing a workshop later today at 4.30 showing you how to use both of these tools. Um, later on, actually, Daniel Nord is developing a uh, Swift version of the UI kit. Uh, so if you're an iOS developer, you could just uh, pull that code directly into your projects. And uh, I've also started uh, dabbling with a React slash React Native version of the UI kit as well, which I'll be working on more this year. So that could be another thing if you're a, a React developer, you might be able to benefit just by pulling that code in directly. Then, you know, things go beyond just the guide and the UI kit. There's also collaborations. Uh, you know, the, the community has, is starting to develop a reputation and Bitcoin uh, FOSS uh, maintainers know that they can come to the community to find help with their projects. Um, so these are all examples of projects that have collaborated with design community members. Um, I've contributed to several of these projects, but I've also not contributed to several of them and have no idea what's going on. Like, I, I mean, I'm in the Albi channel, but I don't really pay attention to what they're doing. I know they're doing good work, but that's, that's the sign that there's not like a, a centralized leader to the, the community, um, that, that it's really good when there's this, uh, all these projects going on in the Slack workspace, and they, they all kind of, um, you know, are, are self-directed and self-motivated, and, and, you know, they don't need central leadership, like telling them what to do. Um, so, so yeah, it's really great to just see so much stuff and just kind of wondering what some of it is. Um, so another thing we've also kind of gotten into is really participating in standards discussion. Um, you know, I think of a, a spec as being like, you know, like a protocol that's like technical specifications. A standard is, is a little bit different. It could be a spec, but a standard is really just like, um, this is like a commonly accepted best practice. And uh, like one of them that we did was the uh, Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin QR dev. It's, it's about the, what I call the unified QR code. It's basically using BIP21 so you can, uh, you can cram an on-chain uh, um, address and a lightning invoice into the same QR code. The user doesn't have to cho choose which technology to use. So um, that's, that's a campaign we've been kind of documenting which wallets support it and which don't and reaching out to projects and seeing if they'd uh, be willing to discuss in involving it. We've also done WinTaproot to try and uh, keep track of uh, which projects are starting to support BEC 32M and pay to tap root, um, just so that, uh, because it's, it's, it's a blocker. If, uh, if uh, the industry doesn't start supporting the tech, it's harder for uh, wallets to start uh, adding more advanced tap root functionality. And we're probably, we're kicking off, we're in the early stages, but we're kicking off a discussion now in the community about Bolt 12 and async payments, which could kind of solve the tip jar problem. Um, the user could download a Lightning wallet and they'd be able to receive payments even when the phone is offline, when it's in their pocket, um, and, and just be able to reuse the same QR code. Maybe even map it on to something like a username, like a Lightning address or a, you know, something like a cash tag or something like that if you're in the States and familiar with, um, with Cash App. So yeah, that, that, that's kind of, uh, you know, as I said, you, as you can see, the community is just kind of, you know, blossomed into all these different directions. Um, you know, what's next? Um, it could really be anything. Uh, you know, some people don't like some of the projects we work on in the community, and that's okay. People come into our Slack channel and debate stuff, you know. It's not like, uh, the, this isn't uh, the community telling you what to do. This is a place for people to discuss user experience in Bitcoin. So um, if there's stuff you want to see uh, in the design guide or, you know, standards that you'd like to discuss, please join the Slack, start the discussion. Um, if you're looking for help uh, with a, a Bitcoin FOSS project, um, or, or even looking to hire somebody or something, you know, please join the community because there's, there's people uh, that, that you'll, you'll meet in there uh, that can help you out with these things. Um, and, and also, you know, particularly, we're always looking for uh, grant funding. Uh, for open source, it's very important to be able to, um, you know, fund these sorts of projects um, in the same way that, you know, you might give a, a grant to like a Bitcoin core dev or something like that. Uh, designers who, uh, you know, focus on this kind of stuff full time or even like part time on a project, uh, they need funding too. Um, so if you're with a company that, uh, uh, you know, does grant funding for Bitcoin open source, uh, please talk to me and because, uh, you know, we'd, we'd love to get you involved in the community. Um, so yeah, thanks for uh, coming by. I, uh, um, if you want to just keep, keep in touch online, 
Uh, I'm, I'm Stephen DeLorme on Twitter. Uh, my website's a top-level domain hack of my last name, d.elor.me. I thought I was really clever when I made it, but it just confuses everybody, sorry. Um, Bitcoin design is way easier, bitcoin.design, that's the website, I don't think you're gonna forget that. And then Bitcoin underscore design on Twitter because somebody else, you know, stole, you know, took the Twitter handle first. I don't know, that's just, just how it goes some days. days. But uh, yeah, and if you're wondering, uh, that's, that's a, that's a that's a Bitcoin, that's a designer venturing into the vast uh, unknown of Bitcoin user experience problems. I don't know, I, you know, I got, I, all my friends are experimenting with AI art and I was starting to feel left out and so I just kind of started throwing prompts into an AI generator and that's how I got the brick wall and that's how I got that and the, 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 the lady at the beginning with the, the, the phone and the, the like Bitcoin accepted sign, I, I think the prompt for that was, a. Uh, um, um, woman with smartphone, Patrick Nagel style poster. You know, the guy who did the, the nail salon art. I don't know, and it came out like a painting, but it still got the like Patrick Nagel lady kind of look, so I don't know. Uh, you know, we could talk about AR later if you want to, I don't know. But yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks for listening and uh, check us out online. Okay, uh, I've got 10 minutes for questions. Developers who have designers, but they aren't in the community. Yeah, yeah I mean, just send them to Bitcoin.design and tell them to get in the Slack channel. Um, I mean, but that's a good question. I, I, that wasn't meant to be like a, a duh answer because because uh, sometimes I, I, I do notice this a lot. People like, they're, they're like, oh, I want all my employees involved in the design community. And then they join the Slack and then they just never, you know, like get involved. Um, you know, and, and sometimes that's a thing at a company, like you're only, you're only going to do exactly like what's required of you that day because you have a million things you have to do, so you're just going to choose what's required. So, I mean, you know, you could do things like if there's a specific call or something that's relevant to what you're working on, you could, you know, look through our calendar of calls and be like, hey, could you, you know, designer, could you, could you show up for this call and just kind of listen in? Same way you might send like one of your employees to a conference or something. You could just send them one of our calls just so they sit in on the call and listen, see if there's any information they can glean from it that's useful for their job. And then once they get on the call and they start talking to people in real time, then they, 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 they sometimes, you know, become, it's more friendly and then they want to stay involved. Um, you know, another thing too uh, is, uh, you know, just like documenting experiences. We're, we're starting to roll out case studies. We've got a PR open for our first case study where we're really trying to um, basically look at like Bitcoin projects and uh, like kind of look at like the, the design stuff that they've already implemented, like what problems their user is facing, how they solved those problems, and, and just document that so that the, the ecosystem can learn from it. So that could be a sort of thing too, like, like a Sahil from Unchained Capital. He's you know full-time des uh, product designer there, but he's, he's very good about like he comes into the community, he shares stuff, um, he shares information, and he wrote a really good blog post one time, it was on the company blog, but he wrote a really good blog post just kind of explaining how he did his design system internally, um, how he kind of was like wrangling the color palette, trying to get it unified, and then also how he collaborated, like what kinds of tools and processes he used to collaborate with the developers on his team to make that happen. So also just like, you know, encouraging your designers to like, uh, like write a, a company blog or something and then share that within the community and all that kind of stuff, that, that could always be good. Oh, and shout out to pa Pablo here also for, you know, uh, get designing and getting printed the latest iteration of the Bitcoin design t-shirt. I didn't have time to slip mine on over here, but yeah, thanks, dude. So, oh, shit, sorry, man. How do people make decisions in open design? How do people make decisions in open design? Oh, God, it's messy, man. I mean, it's not like... It's not, it's, it's not like working at a company where you have top-down leadership and, uh, you know, sometimes it's easier because even at a company, if you disagree with what your boss is telling you, you can just be like, well, I wash my hands of it. It's like I, I, I'm, I'm, there's a sense of comfort, I think, in a centralized organization because 
uh, even if you disagree with it, at least you know what you're supposed to be doing. And I mean, it's, I'm not gonna lie, it's messy in open source because uh, if you believe in an idea strong enough, you have to uh, stick up and defend that idea. Um, and you have to do so, and, and no one's you know, forcing anybody to be anywhere or in any certain meeting, so you have to, if you, if you uh, genuinely believe uh, in an idea and that it has value, you have to find a way to defend the idea and discuss it, um, but while also, like, for lack of a better word, just not being a dick, you know? So it, it, it's, it's very complicated, and I mean, I, I guess, you know, we have this kind of principle just in open source in general of, like, rough consensus, this idea that, like, you know, you put ideas out in the open, you kind of let them sit for a little bit. Um, you you, you kind of have like a feedback period. You know, things can move a little slower in open source. You, you know, you put out an idea. Hey, does anybody want to comment on this? Does anybody have feedback, suggestions? Really just give time for people to kind of argue and debate about things. And then uh, eventually you start to look at, get, uh, get to something like rough consensus um, where <clears throat> everyone doesn't like 100% agree, but they've like zeroed in on like something that they do agree on. And then you can just be like, someone can finally be like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and start, you know, doing my portion of the project with these assumptions that we've agreed on. If anyone has a problem with that, let me know, but that's what I'm going to do. And then they start working on it. And, and so yeah, it's just uh, you, you really just got, have to take uh, time to move slowly and just kind of solicit feedback and, and all of that. Um, and, and, and that's not always gonna work. You could get to the point where there's a PR and then, and then find out that you know, someone really, really, really disagrees with it. And, um, it, it's never going to be perfect, but yeah, just move slow, be open, have you know genuine, intellectually honest discussions with people. Cool. Uh, do you have any advice for maybe like newer designers that aren't confident enough yet to like practice full like open design in public, and, but still want like feedback on their work? Oh yeah, how to get uh, designers confident building in public? That's, I mean, that's that's a tough one. I mean, you could. I mean, I think the, the here's the thing. I'm just going to pull like what my college professors like told me like like a long time ago, and I was I, I didn't appreciate it at the time, but it was like start a blog, and it was just like post your work on your blog, and I didn't appreciate that. I was like, oh, it's not perfect. I don't want to post it right now. Like I want to put it on my portfolio site where it's all going to look nice and be in like a perfect grid. I don't want like a freaking blog, dude. And I didn't appreciate that for a lot later because. Really, you, you, have to, you have to get uh, um, more comfortable, I think, if you're gonna build in public with sharing ideas that are messy, broken, potentially wrong. And so I think tweeting, blogging, whatever you wanna do it, but just getting in the habit of sharing short firm work and being uncomfortable with it, you, you just have to, you have to fight that and, and really get comfortable with sharing stuff. Um, like Christoph from the design community, he's always, his, the, his kind of motto is always, share work early and often. Like, when, when, you, when you feel the worst about the work, that's when you're supposed to share it. Because if you, feel, if, you feel, if, if you do feel bad about it, if you don't feel comfortable with it, then that means you're not like, um, you're, you're just gonna get stuck in this rut feeling bad about it and trying to make it perfect and then feeling worse about it. So when you feel bad about it is actually when you do need to get it out in the world and share it with people. But I'm not gonna say there's gonna be an easy way for a, a young design, you know, like a, a newer designer to build in public. It's, it's really a skill they have to cultivate and quite frankly, it's what I'm still working on myself. Design crits, yeah, uh, that's a that's a great idea. I mean, we we do some of those in the community, um, uh, you know, like kind of like design, uh, uh, like reviewing existing products, and we should really probably do like more of like a, a recurring meeting, like, hey, anybody who's working on anything, just pop into this call, and we'll give you impromptu feedback. I know you're doing that too with like Bolt Fun and Legends of Lightning Ed and all that, and like trying to do the like, hey. You know, don't don't just turn in a hackathon project at the end. Jump on a call every week and share with us, you know, what you're working on. So I think you're doing great work. That's, you know, you're you're doing great work. I think on the build and public side and kind of building those habits from people. Okay, I think we probably need to cut off there because there's another talk after this, and I want to make sure they have time to set up and all that. So thanks, thanks everyone for coming by.